In this demonstration, we're going to see how we can optimize system level performance using optimization algorithms. We have a model of an electromechanical actuator that extends and contracts in order to position an aileron to a specific angle. It has an inner loop for control and an outer control loop for speed. When we run the simulation and compare it to the requirements, we can see that it is well within the requirements for the force that the actuator can provide. However, it is not tracking the reference angle very well. We need to optimize the system so that it meets all of the requirements for the system. We will use Simulink Design Optimization to do that. There are parameters in the controller that we can tune in order to improve the performance of our system. We will use optimization algorithms to automatically tune these parameters until all requirements are met. I will now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. Here is our model of our actuation system. A three-dimensional mechanical model of an aileron is controlled by an electromechanical actuator implemented in Simscape Electronics. A motor rotates to extend and contract a lead screw. When we run the simulation, we will see how the system performs. Here we can see the reference signal it is supposed to track, and we can tell it is far from tracking it well. Here is the amount of force that the actuator is providing, and it is fairly low, well within the requirements for the system. We need to tune the speed controller in order to improve the performance of the system. Here are the two gains that we wish to tune, the proportional and integral gain for the speed controller. We could tune these gains by hand, but a much faster way to do it would be to use Simulink Design Optimization. I have opened Simulink Design Optimization, and here is where we will do the optimization in order to tune these parameter gains. Here you can see plots of the aileron angle and the force. You can see the requirements here, the angle that it must track, and the limits on the force that it can provide. Here you can see the two parameters that we wish to tune, the control gain parameters. I will now run the optimization and let Simulink Design Optimization automatically tune these parameters until the results of the simulation meet these requirements. So here on the scopes you can see every simulation, the results of the simulations that are being run. So every time you see the scopes blink, that means that Simulink Design Optimization has run a simulation, evaluated the results of the simulation against the requirements that we have on these plots, come up with a new value for the parameters, and then reruns the simulation again. You can see that after a short period of time, the results have improved quite a bit. Right now we're running the simulation sequentially or one after another. We could accelerate this optimization process even further by running these uh, simulations in parallel. We could distribute them across multiple cores on my machine or we could distribute them across the computing cluster. During the optimization we can see the trajectory of the parameters and we can see that it is evaluating how sensitive the system is to the different parameters in order to make a better guess as to what the results should be. And if we look at our requirements plots here, we can see that it is still within the limits that have been defined for the force the actuator can provide. In this particular example, I'm only tuning controller parameters, but it would also be possible to run this optimization tuning control parameters and parameters of the physical system. And that would be a way to truly optimize the overall design, optimizing both the controller and the, con and the physical system at the same time. So at this point I'm going to stop the optimization. We can see that the results are quite good and it is converging on an excellent result. I will stop the optimization and load the final results and rerun it so that you can see what they look like. So we can see that it is tracking the reference signal very well and it's coming very close to the limits here that we have set for the force that the actuator can produce. In this demonstration, we have seen how we can use optimization algorithms to automatically optimize system-level performance.